Is this thing on? Can you all hear me? Is this good? Is this good? All right. <clears throat> uh, hello. Congratulations to our Kahoot winner, Joshua. Great job, man. Great job. Um, tonight, I'm going to dive into the story of Peter, um, arguably his biggest mistake, his three denials of Jesus Christ. Um, but before we get there, I want to start with a little story. Oh, no, that's better. Is that better? Yeah. Start with a little story of me back in fourth grade. So about eight years ago, um, I received my first F, right? Now, I know I say that, and it's like, oh, you know, like that. It was huge to me. It was world-ending. I mean, like, I didn't think my life would go on. And I was struggling how to deal with it, because there's two options. The one is just to accept that consequence, accept the punishment that comes along with the F. Um, and that's not the option I chose. I chose the second one, which was to um, and when I did it, it was a hard choice. I was deciding, is this worth it? And I thought, if I can avoid the consequences, then yes, it is. Um, and so I threw it away, forgot about it, and then a couple of days went by, and I was like, yes, that worked. Um, and I thought that'd be the end of it. Um, but then the second F came in, and I was like, oh, this is going to happen again. But it worked the first time, so why don't I just try it and throw it away? So I threw it away one more time, um, and it worked like a charm. Uh, but then the third F, third F came in as well. But by then I was a pro at it already, so I just I already knew where to throw it and all that. Um, <laughs> so I threw it away again. Even if I did this, it got easier and easier and easier. Now what I failed to consider in all this was that your grades are on the parent portal at the time. You can still check the grades electronically. So even though I threw away the paper, it was still very clear that I had the three Fs. Um, and uh, one evening, uh, my mom calls me to a room. And she goes, Ryan, what are these? She goes on. It's parent portal at the time. Now it's like parent paper. Um, but it was parent portal. And she said, what are these three Fs? And I was like, mm -mm. that wasn't me. Like, there's no way I could have done that. Um, and you, you would have thought the evidence is right there. I would have given up. But no, I kept going. Um, and it got to the point where she was about to send a letter to the teacher. And I was like, this has gone too far. And I can't go any farther with this lie. And so I confessed. Now, I tell you this story not just to like, poke fun at me, um, but to demonstrate how we live our lives in God. I know it's a bit of a jump, but where, like in my story, we mess up again and again and again. In this case, it was throwing away the Fs. In our case, in our life, um, it's, uh, it's some of our stakes. And like my story, they're active choices, whether that be lying, watching shouldn't, uh, wholesome talking, spreading rumors, things that God says we should not do. And I go further to say, like my F, um, we downplay these sins, you know, that we do it so much that it doesn't seem like a big deal. Um, especially as we keep doing it and doing it, even though God calls these things abominations. Um, and I mention these not to condemn, because that's not what I'm here for, um, but to show you that we all suffer from sin, me included. Um, but luckily, the Bible has a lot of people who dealt with sin, and it shows God's response towards it. So if we start, uh, we look at John, John 18, verses 15, we look at Peter's first denial. Um, and it says, Simon Peter, another disciple, were following Jesus. This was after Jesus has been taken um, and sent to be talked to and, you know, all that stuff. Um, so because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter had to wait outside of the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the sermon girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. So, like, Peter's, like, the outsider, and his other disciple was, like, the cool guy, and so we got to go in. And they had to confirm that Peter was good, so then he got him. And then the servant girl asked Peter, you aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing by the fire to keep himself warm. So he receives first denial, um, just outright denying God. And if we little, read a little further to uh, verse 25, Peter, we see Peter's second and third denial saying, Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, a rooster began to crow. In this example, we see Peter literally denying God. You know, um, And we look at that, and we see that I would never do that. <laughs> like, I, I would never outright say, I do not know Christ. Um, but that's why I like Peter, and I think he's relatable to all of us. Because if we go to Matthew's rendition of the story, he said the same thing. You know, he goes to the, back to that story. He says, specifically, even if all else run away, I'm still with you. If all fall away, 
I will be with you. And even if they die, I will never disown you. And we obviously see how that plays out, him denying Jesus three times. Um, but I mentioned that to show that G- Peter was one of Jesus' closest disciples. You know, it was like John and Peter. Like, those are the two top, those are the two guys. He was with Peter, or J- Peter was with Jesus, like, all the time. Like, for three years of his ministry, he was one of the closest people to the Son of God. And he still fell and denied Christ. Um, and if we left the story there, that's a really sad ending, right? Because there's no hope. He denied Christ, and Jesus is gone. Um, and if we stop reading the Bible there, that's all we know. But if we keep reading, go to verses John 21 instead. Um, this is after Jesus has been resurrected. Um, if you remember, it's the disciples on the boat. Um, and Jesus has not made himself known to them yet. And they have the fish on one side and no fish. Throw on the other side. Oh, I'll get a million fish, that one. Um, and so when Peter gets along shore and Jesus talks to him, um, he says this. Simon, son of John, Peter, uh, do you love me more than these? When he says more than these, he means, do you love me more than the disciples love me? He's like, do you love me more than these guys, right? Uh, yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. He answered, or again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him three times. And then he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. This is important because even after Peter's, Peter's denial of Christ, Jesus still reinstates him as a disciple of Jesus Christ. He still has a plan for him. You know that last part where it says, it talks about how Peter will be dressed. He's talking about um, Peter's crucifixion, actually, um, and how he'll be taken to prison, dressed in clothes he doesn't want to, and eventually crucified upside down, by the way. Um, <laughs> and what's great about this is that same mercy that reinstated Peter is going to reinstate us too. You know, it's, it's the same mercy. Um, he has a plan to glorify him, and we're all part of that plan. And you know what's even better about this plan? It tells us how to glorify God, even. You know, when Jesus says, do you love me? He then responds, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, and take care of my sheep. I don't know about y'all, but when Jesus talks, sometimes he sounds really confusing. You know, he talks in parables and all that. But with all things considered, this is a pretty direct order. Like, he's straight up saying, feed my sheep. You know, take care of his followers, which I don't know about that. That's me and you and you. That's all of us here. I know that's a lot to unpack. Um, so if I could summarize this into three main points, I would start by saying we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, we've all failed, continue to. There's nothing we can do to stop that. Um, and furthermore, like how Peter or Jesus predicted Peter's denial, Jesus and God know we're going to sin. They already know we're going to fall, stumble, fail. Um, and despite this, um, if you go to the second point, um, that Jesus is enough. So despite that, Jesus was enough so that that's forgiven. If it wasn't for Jesus, it would have ended at his denial. All of ours would have ended there as well. But due to God's forgiveness, we're given another chance, um, which leads perfectly into my third point, that Jesus still has a plan for you and me. Once Peter is reinstated with Christ, it doesn't just end there. He doesn't just like get his title and then he lays down the rest of his life. No, he goes and spreads the gospel, feeding Jesus' sheep as commanded to all of us. Um, and a lot of you might wonder, how do you feed someone's sheep? Personally, um, praying for your fellow believers. Um, I think even more importantly, taking time to engage with them. Because um, as he says, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Well, if you don't know what to feed them, then you know, kill them somehow. You got to take time to engage with them so you know how to best spread the gospel to the people around you. Um, and... There's also a little bonus thing I think we can get away from this passage, um, and that's a lot of us in our own lives, well, at least if you haven't already, we'll have a Peter in our own lives, where if we take the story from Jesus' perspective, someone's going to deny us, um, whether they slander us, hurt us, lie about us, whatever it is, we're going to have a Peter in our lives. Um, and when Peter denied Christ, you know, it says he wept, he, wept, he regretted what he did. Um, but let's say in our situation, Peter, the, our Peter does not do this. Let's say they don't even realize what they've done. And what do we do about that? Well, the Bible calls us to be like Jesus. And in this case, Jesus still forgives. Not only that, he continues to love despite his shortcomings. 
So I challenge y'all to do the same. Um, and generally at the end of these sermons, we do like little like weekly challenges to like get you going in the week, you know, maybe think about Jesus. Um, but I'm going to give you a little broader one that I really hope goes past a week. I hope for the rest of your life. Um, and it's to forgive like Jesus did. Um, in doing so, you're being a light to others. People notice when you forgive, when it feels like you shouldn't. You know, when someone wrongs you and they don't care and you still forgive, people notice that. Um, and by being that light, you're opening that pathway to someone else in your life. You know, you're being that light. And you might never see the fruit of, you might never see the fruit of what that leads to, um, but I promise you God's working in the people around you. And so you might just start an ember, but God will take that into a flame. Um, and this flame can lead to eternal life for even some of your best friends. You know, just to think about that, hang out with your friends in heaven, come on. Um, uh, but that's where I'm ending tonight. I, can we end the prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the congregation here today. Thank you for this message to um, speak to these people, Lord. Please help us to find the Peter in our lives. And when we are the Peter, Lord, that you can um, help us find what's right, Lord. Help us to forgive and to help be slow to anger in these situations, Lord. Um, help us to that when we fall, Lord, to help know that you're going to be there for us, Lord. That despite our shortcomings, you still have a plan for us and continue to forgive us. Uh, I ask these things in your Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Good job, Ryan. Appreciate that word. And I hope that was an encouragement for you. I think we all can relate to that message. We've all been Peter at some point in our lives where we've made that mistake. We've fallen short, you know, and, uh, and so we feel that guilt. We feel that shame. And and the great thing about the good news, the gospel, it's so radically different about any other religion, any other thing out there, is that it's not based on what we or do or do not do um, to gain the love of our Heavenly Father. God extends that to us through his death on a cross. And so it's this unconditional love that God has for us that's incredible. And through that love, we can also, as Ryan just made a great point, like maybe there's some people in your life that maybe God's put on your heart tonight take that time to think, who is that Peter, that person that maybe is a little difficult to love? Maybe someone who's hurt you or, or wronged you, all right? You know, maybe that person is the person that God is calling you to, to love and to encourage because it may be the last thing that they're expecting. And I encourage you to think about that person and that, how you can love on that person. You might say, why should I do that, all right? You know, they're mean. They do this. They do that. Well, that's how God loves us. The amount of frustration we may feel to that person that's the kind of stuff that maybe that God feels. And yet, in spite of that, God still chose to love you and to love me. And so that's the gospel. It's the good news that God loves us, sometimes despite, and especially despite our failures and wrongdoing. So, uh, Ryan, great job. Thanks for a reminder. And I encourage you guys to just uh, to share that same love uh, just to the people in your life. So, that sound good? Awesome. Well, tonight we're going to finish up. This is our grilling and gaming night. So we got a little bit of time left. Looks like 15 minutes. And so I just encourage you guys, um, feel free to grab. Well, actually, looks like it's away. But feel free to play some more games, um, hang out. Um, no highlight next week, but we do have camp. So we'll see you then. Thank you, guys. And don't forget to come on out to groups.